So I want to build a gaming table. I've never built one before, so I've come to the man that knows a little bit about building gaming tables. Let's go see what he's up to. Luke, are you up there, bud? Yeah, what do you want? All right, Luke. Do you uh, fancy helping me with something? Depends where it is. Hey, well, are you busy? Yeah, of course I am. I'm always busy. Well, do you want to not be busy for a bit and help me? So what do you want me to help you with? Uh, well, I need to build a table. I was thinking something, maybe this sort of size, 3x3. Three three. Right. Uh, it's for drowned earth, so modern, urban. Flood and urban city. Road, yeah, ruin, some water effects. Something easy for your first board, yeah? Yeah, man. <laughs> 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 What's going on Pickle People? My name is Josh and yes, you heard me right. I am finally entering into the world of terrain making. This is not a prank, it's not a joke. I want to build a gaming table because it's something I've wanted to do for a hell of a long time and I'm finally doing it. Now, I've always been a little bit put off and a little bit intimidated, but I have got Luke on hand from Geek Gaming Scenics to offer me some advice and give me a little bit of light bullying when I'm going wrong. But for the most part, I'm doing all the work myself and I'm really, really excited to be cracking on with this. Now, I'm building a 3x3 board, which is perfect for skirmish style games, and it's also perfect for a first board build because it's not too over ambitious. The game that I'm basing this on and wanting to play on this table is The Drowned Earth, which is a miniatures game set in a sort of post apocalyptic, overgrown world where it sees everything abandoned and plenty of plant life and things like that. And I thought this would be a nice combination of sort of terrain making like some natural stuff some urban stuff gives me a bit of everything for my first board build without having to sort of commit to one or the other now the first thing that i needed to do was to plan the layout for the board i'd printed all my terrain off already beforehand i had looked at using mdf terrain but i didn't really like the look of the mdf terrain it would have needed a hell of a lot of work to make it look how I wanted it to look and as this is my first board build I wanted it to look really really nice and be something that I was proud of so I 3d printed this terrain I was really happy with it I wanted to have roofs on the buildings rather than leaving them open so that it adds a bit more variety and height to the board I wanted to leave some nice open spaces which is what the roads are for in the middle because I can add scatter terrain to them if I need to if I didn't depending on what game I'm playing if I want to add a bit more dense terrain I can put some on if not I can leave them nice open roofs roads and we've also got the sort of confined spaces like the alleyways and behind the buildings and stuff like that for stuff that's already built into the board so there's a lot of variety and a lot of nice different sort of areas and things that I can work with later on. Now one of the things that's always worried me about doing big projects like this like terrain and boards and stuff is using the right products there's been so many horror stories that I've seen about people using the wrong glue or a spray paint and the wrong foam and it all like melting or whatever and just ruining the project. I've always been worried that I'd buy the wrong thing or get mixed up and use the wrong thing so it's kind of put me off. Now I did have Luke on hand to help out and give me advice and pointers and stop me from doing anything catastrophically wrong but I think realistically a bit more research and I'd have probably figured this out myself because it really actually wasn't that difficult in the end. So I guess just do your research if you're wanting to do stuff like this and don't be worried because it's all fixable realistically anyway. Now that all the base was in place, it was time to start adding a little bit of damage before we started gluing all the terrain on. Now, I knew that I wanted to add some water effects, some resin onto this because it's for the drowned earth and it needs to be a little bit watery, but I didn't want to do a full resin pour on a 3x3 board because that's a little bit ambitious for my first project. So I settled for making some dents and potholes and stuff in the roads which we would then fill in with resin later on. Now the first attempt was a little bit too neat so I did get a bit carried away on the second attempt here but I think it, it looks all right in the end once it's all painted and got all the different basing stuff on it. I'm actually really happy with how this looks. With all the damaged sections of the roads are in place and I was happy with that, it was time to start gluing all the terrain down. Now we'd already sort of planned out where the terrain was going to go, we knew what we wanted to do with it, so this was just a case of taking the different bits and gluing them all in so that they all fitted together and made sense. Once this was all glued down it made it a lot easier to sort of carve in all the details for the pavements and things like that, getting all the different slabs laid out and lined out and carving this in was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, it was literally a case of drawing it in with a pencil.
Now, you know how I mentioned earlier about worrying about using the wrong things and melting foam and stuff like that? Well, Luke did a test spray of some aerosol on a spare piece of foam, and it's a good job that he did because had it been left to me, I'd have sprayed it straight onto the board and I'd have actually melted most of the work that I'd just done. So we actually put a coat of just craft paint of PVA glue down to protect the foam before we went in with the aerosol to spray all the different bits of terrain and stuff up. This is what I mean about getting stuff wrong. I guess I'd have found some way to fix it, but having Luke on hand and maybe just doing a bit more research beforehand would have been the better option. We put a quick zenithal spray over the top and then it was time to start painting the terrain. Now I'd been quite looking forward to this and I had actually planned on painting all the terrain separately before it was attached to the board, but I think it worked out a lot nicer spraying it while it was on the board. Yes, it was a little bit more awkward, a little bit more difficult to get to, but it meant that everything sort of tied together, it fitted together. It didn't really matter if I went over with the airbrush a little bit because we were going to be putting washers and all that sort of stuff on this at a later point. So it all ended up fitting together really nicely and ended up making it tie together and look like an actual town rather than loads of different random bits of terrain all stuck on one board. And I was quite happy with that in the end. Now it was starting to sort of come together as well. It was like colour was getting added to the board, details were getting added, I was getting to do stuff like the lines on the roads, the markings and all that sort of stuff and adding all these little details in really started to pull the board together. I was actually quite shocked at how easy it had been up to this point, like I know that it sounds daft to say but it is just following step by step like right now we do this and then we do this and then we do this and with every step that we added it looked nicer and nicer. That is until we added the oil wash, which was quite frankly, absolutely terrifying to do. All the hard work, all the painting, all the stuff that we'd just done, and then we covered it all up with a really dark black wash. But this is an oil wash, and that means that when you put it on, it goes on really thick, and then you go and you dab off all the excess, which means that what you're left with is the oil wash in the recesses and the areas that you want it to be but then it's nice and bright and it rubs off and it gives you that nice variation in like texture it gives you a variety in sort of shading and highlights and stuff and it the oil wash more than anything else tied the entire board together i was blown away with how effective it was and i actually started using it on my miniatures since doing this board for the same reason now we give it a quick dry brush just to pick out the edges on the sort of damage on the streets, the damage on the roads, the rubble, all that sort of stuff, just to pick out those details and brighten it back up just a little bit after putting that dark oil wash down. And then once we'd done that, Luke started letting me throw dirt around. And by that I mean base reddies. Now this is a step that I wouldn't have thought to do. I would have just left it as the grey edge highlight and I would have thought that would be fine. But adding in this bit of variety, this extra bit of colour, just the little browns and stuff like that around the damaged areas, around any sort of broken pavement slabs, all that sort of stuff. And to hide all the sort of misprints that I'd got where there's like gaps where the print's risen up and stuff. This was absolutely fantastic and, and definitely something that I wouldn't have thought of, but it really adds a hell of a lot to the board. Now one of the things that I was both terrified of using and looking forward to using was the static grass applicator. I've got a bit of a weird phobia about getting electrocuted even if it's only minor shocks. So I was a bit worried about getting shocked when using this but I did the few patches of grass on this adding some shorter stuff and then some longer stuff on the top to make it look overgrown. I didn't get shocked once, it was actually really easy to use, it does create a lot of mess but it looks really nice once it's all done. Once everything was sealed down and attached to the board, it was time to do the resin pour. And this, I was really looking forward to doing because I've never really used resin on this sort of scale before. Even though it's nothing massive, it's still more than I've used before. We added a bit of a green tint in there so that it looked like murky, dirty water. And then literally just mixed up the two parts and poured them into the gaps that we'd carved out earlier. This set really nice. It added a different finish to certain areas of the board and added that nice little bit of visual interest that I think it needed to pull away from the sort of matte finish of everything else. Now, the board was more or less finished at this point. I tied up the edges and did all that sort of bits and pieces just to finish it off. And then it was time to start adding in the plant life. Now, 
added in a few smaller flowers into some of the flower beds that we'd put around the park area but this wasn't really going to cut it for drowned earth i wanted everything nice and overgrown and like really over the top vivid vegetation so i went out and i bought myself some uh, aquarium plastic plants that you put in fish tanks and this is what we got now these are all aquatic plants, they're all very bright, very neon, very plasticky and they didn't really fit in with the rest of the scenic work that we'd done so once I was happy with the placement and I knew where everything was going to go I took them all off one by one, sprayed them with a dark red, like a reddy brown and then oversprayed that with a sort of mid green as well just to add a nice sort of blend between the red and the green I didn't worry too much about getting a complete covering because a little bit of the colour showing through from the original plastic would help to add to that variety and make them all look interesting. Once they were all sprayed and dried, it was just a case of sort of slotting everything back in, putting it on the board, making sure it all made sense, and that was the board then completely finished. I've had a hell of a lot of fun building this board, and it's something that I've wanted to do for such a long time that I'm, I'm just really glad that I've finally done it. And doing this one has inspired me to have a go at doing a few other boards as well in the future. Probably the same sort of size, maybe something a bit bigger, I don't know yet. But I, I had a hell of a lot of fun putting this one together and I am really, really proud of what I've done with this board. Now that the board was finished, it was finally time to start getting some gameplay in on it. Now, luckily Ben from Benji's Hobbies has started getting into Drowned Earth as well. So I convinced him to come over and have our first intro game on my new scenic gaming table. And we had an absolute blast, loads of laughs, and I can't wait to play more games on this table with Ben. Make sure to check out the Drowned Earth guys, I've put a link down below in the description and one in the pinned comments. It's an absolutely fantastic rule system, some fantastic miniatures and it really is a fun game to play. I can't wait to play some more and hopefully we'll be doing some on live streams in the future so stay tuned for that. And thank you once again to Drowned Earth for sponsoring this video. If you've enjoyed the video be sure to leave a like down below and if you're brand new to the channel make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you want to help support the channel all our affiliate links are down below in the description as well as our free discord server link. Massive thank you to all our current channel members you guys are absolutely amazing and that's going to do it for this one. I'll catch you in the next one and until then enjoy your hobby.